Yo, what's good, everybody? Gains New York here, and we're patiently waiting the PlayStation 5 technical presentation hosted by Mark Cerny. If you guys know, Mark Cerny is the mastermind behind the PlayStation 4 design and the PlayStation 5 design, and there's rumors running rapping that it's going to be the PlayStation 5 Pro, which is kind of obvious at this point, but um, yeah, we're just 30 seconds away, and let's get some live feedback on this. Now, my no real expectations, I think it's probably going to be 600 bucks, hopefully two terabytes, and powerful as shit, but we'll see in 15, 13 seconds. Let's get this show on the roll. Now, it's only a nine-minute presentation, so should be relatively fast, straight to the point. Let's see. Let's see what they got. Hi, I'm Mark Sony. I'm excited to be here to talk about the newest addition to our console lineup. Okay. And how it advances gaming technology. Obviously. But first, I want to take just a minute to look at what we put in the original PlayStation 5 and how it delivers an exceptional gaming When PS5 debuted in 2020, it brought a lot to the table. Eight Zen 2 CPU cores form the brains of PlayStation 5 and enable high-speed complex gameplay with character counts reaching into the hundreds and frame rates that can be as high as 120 frames a second. The PS5 has a powerful RDNA 2 GPU which can render anything from intricate details to fantastic worlds with vast panoramas to explore. Ray tracing allows for dramatic visual improvements, including reflections off of water or glass, and the realism that comes from real-time global illumination. Custom SSD can load data at breathtaking speed, resulting in ultra-fast transitions between game worlds and data streaming rates so high the traversal speeds are essentially unlimited. Still haven't played Spider-Man 2. Tempest 3 Audio Tech brings an unparalleled sense of immersion to the sound of the games. With audio so real, you may not even need to see the enemies to know exactly where they are. Finally, the DualSense controller has haptics that let you feel through your hands what your character is experiencing inside of it's wonderful to see such variety and richness of game experiences. Creators have made amazing use of the hardware capabilities, but when I talk to them, I do hear about their desire for more graphics and performance. The dreams of the developers are bigger than can be supported at 60 frames per second, and that leads to an aspect of modern gaming that we're all familiar with, graphics modes. It can be a difficult choice for players. Yeah. Fidelity Annoying. If you want better graphics, you gotta play 60, 30 frames, 60 frames, less graphics. Let's see if we change that up. The visuals can be choppier and the controls less responsive. Performance modes emphasize frame rate and interactivity, typically choosing to run 60 frames per second. Mainly by reducing the graphical detail until those frame rates can be achieved. When asked to decide on the mode, players are choosing performance about three quarters of the time. Removing that decision, or at least narrowing that divide, is one of the key targets for PlayStation 5 Pro. We want to give players the graphics that the game creators aspire to at the high frame rates that players typically prefer. To do that, PS5 Pro substantially improves over PlayStation 5 in three ways. Here's what we call the big three. First, we made the GPU much larger and increased the speed of the memory it uses. The result is rendering that's up to 45% faster. Second, okay. we made major upgrades to the ray tracing, taking a streamlined and accelerated approach that allows calculation of the rays at double or even triple the speeds of PlayStation 5. And finally, we added custom hardware for machine learning and an AI library called PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution or PSSR for short. PSSR analyzes the game images pixel by pixel and can add an extraordinary amount of detail, which
which boosts the effective resolution of the games. Game creators are adding PS5 Pro support to new and existing titles. And with the big three involved, the results can be pretty amazing. With graphics showing something like fidelity levels of detail, but at double the frame rate. Here's The Last of Us Part 2 running on PS5 Pro. It has huge amounts of detail and targets a super smooth 60 frames per second. Let's compare this to the fidelity rate on PS5, which is only running at 30 frames per second and is therefore much chunkier. This goal of delivering almost fidelity-like graphics at performance frame rates has been achieved for a broad set of titles, including Marvel's Spider-Man 2 and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. We can see that PS5 Pro is close to doubling the power of PlayStation 5. Another way to compare the two consoles is to look at PS5 Pro versus performance mode on PS5 both of which target 60 frames per second. What we see here is a difference in detail. PS5 Pro is much sharper and crisper than PS5. For this, my favorite is the parade scene from Ratchet and Clank. Distant details are much clearer. And here we can see Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is noticeably higher resolution throughout the scene, including the trees and procedural cars. So overall, some remarkable improvements for games. On PS5 Pro, we can see increased sharpness to the graphics or smoother and more responsive gameplay. This is the big three showing their value. As you've been seeing, machine learning via the PSSR library is being used quite broadly to add pixel detail and boost frame rate. But there are as many approaches as there are game engines. The increase in raw GPU power is being especially effective for Horizon Forbidden West. Apart from the detail boost, that extra graphics... Show me Bloodborne, bro. Show me Bloodborne. 60 frames, 120 frames. As well as Crazy graphics. Open up, guys. Show them service. Ray tracing is finding broad usage as well, particularly when the games are focused on higher frame rates. The faster hardware in PS5 Pro can make a real difference. Allowing Gran Turismo 7 to add ray trace reflections between the cars in gameplay, or continuing to support their targeted 60 frames per second. That boost in ray tracing is also delivering big wins for Hogwarts Legacy. Allowing not only for better reflections and a greater variety of reflective surfaces, but also for further realism in the casting of shadows. I hope you've enjoyed this run through of the technology behind PlayStation 5 Pro. Simply put, it's the most powerful console we've ever built, and a worthy addition to the PS5 family. Let me wrap this up by giving you a quick look at a number of games running on the new console. You're never the, the leaks were right. The design looks similar to the leaks. I don't know how big it is, though. Pause. Kind of like the slim size, but I highly doubt if they have all that tech in there. I'm going to say 550, 600. I don't know. Those specifications were very, you have to be a nitpicker to, you know, tell those differences. Um, is it a necessary upgrade to the majority of people? I don't think so. But if you're someone like me who's always getting the new consoles, regardless of anything, um, I'm, I'm definitely going to cop it. Especially with, you know, next year, a lot of games coming out are going to definitely utilize it. Uh, GTA 6, for example. So, yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Because I know GameStop, certain retailers, they do like this deal where you trade in your existing console, you get the new one for like. 50% off so if I run into a deal like that I'm gonna cop but to pay full price ah uh, get a little skeptical they should have showed Final Fantasy Rebirth on that 700 700 
Sheesh. Damn. Hold up. That's kind of um. That's kind of wild. What, what's the chat saying? L L L. <laughs> what a joke price, bro. That's kind of expensive. Yeah, I, I'm. You gotta. I gotta be guaranteed sixty frames for every single game. Top notch graphics, but seven hundred is kind of OD. That's kind of wild. I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. You know, the scalpers about to be going crazy with this shit. Um. Damn. Seven hundred wasn't on the on the board, but um. MBG, I know he's going to be going off with that, but shit, that is, uh, that's a lot. That's pricey. Even if you trade in your existing PlayStation 5, you probably only going to get like 250 off of that. So still looking at a lot of money and the vertical stand doesn't even come with it. Come on, bro. Like, what are you doing? Also looks like there's no disk drive. Yeah, that's, that's bad, bro. It don't look like they got a disk drive. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't know how I'm feeling about that. Just looking at that price in yen is crazy. But 700 US is crazy. I don't know. What you guys think? How y'all feeling about this? This is crazy. I mean, based off that presentation, it didn't really show much for it to justify that price. So it's just a matter of, you know, time will tell. We got to see more, more content. And they just have to be putting more pressure. Like, this is some more differences. Not showing those first-party titles that they show. Showing third-party titles as well. So, yeah, we, we need a 2 terabyte as well. We definitely need a 2 terabyte. If not, then... That's an L, bro. That's an L. MBG doing a little shit. It's a maybe right now. Fluctuating a lot of nose. But yeah, guys, that's that's kind of kind of crazy. It was not expecting seven hundred. I know that's gonna be a talking point of this conference for weeks to come until it's it's released. So, hey, man, we'll we'll see. But yeah, just want to get this little quick um reaction video out i know it's pretty early here 11 a.m that the conference just closed out but yeah playstation 5 pro 700 beans we'll definitely be doing more videos um as more info comes out but until then your boy games new york uh make sure to follow like ig games.gaming podcast the lobby chat podcast my personal games.ny and i'll catch you on the next stream bro